Welcome to the video. All day of eating. How original. But yeah, man. I'm not going to concentrate on that. It's on exactly what I'm eating in terms of the meals. But I'm just going to outline some techniques that I use when I'm in a deficit and I'm trying to get in to my kind of best shape. Um, so it starts with implementing a fast, intermittent fasting. I know it's um, it kind of it's, it's one of them in it. it gets a bit of a bad rep because people rip the arse out of it like anything. But I like to do it in the morning. I, I technically don't do it. I'm having 10 grams of honey in my coffee, but uh, I won't be eating now until about 10, 11, depending on how I feel. And this is a period of time where I just do any work that I've got to do. So, good two, three hours working, man. But, um, yeah, I'll just outline the different techniques at different times that help me sustain my um, calorie deficit. Basically, today, I've just come off a deload last week, so I've got a resistance session and I've got no CV programmed in, no cardio work programmed in for today. So it's a baseline calories for me to be in a deficit is 2,400 calories. I go for about 180 to 200 grams of protein as well. And um, yeah, man, I'll show you what. I'll show you what I've. I mean, I've done a load of these before. If you if you if you watch these, so. But I'll just let you know what kind of techniques we use to make the deficit as sustainable as possible. But I'm gonna do a bit of work now. Turn the fan on because it's absolutely red hot. <sighs> yeah man, I'll see you at breakfast. seen it a million times, everyday breakfast, it is 11.40am so like I said extended period of time before eating, it does take a couple of weeks to get used to but I would suggest if you're not used to it after a couple of weeks maybe it's not for you and there's nothing wrong with maybe even fasting at the end of the end of the day or something that I've done before is have my breakfast and then the period of time between my breakfast and my next meal is like six, seven hours. So sort of condensing those last two meals where the chunk, the middle of the day where you're typically more busy, you can have that period of time basically not eating things like diet, diet drinks, lots of water. And cause you're busy, your mind's not really thinking, let me eat some stuff. But same as always, Chinese kale, cherry tomatoes, this is 100 gram of egg whites and three eggs, 100 gram of oats, 20 grams of nut butter, fish oils, probiotic, and magnesium and zinc, and obviously a brew. Yeah man, we we'll eat this. This is a pre-workout meal for a cruisy little session today. I managed to burn my eggs because I'm making a video. Sound. Very average training session, just getting back into it, but I've got a little bit of the old golfer's elbow. It's ever so slight, but it's very... I'm one of them, I don't like training, unless I'm 100% like... I don't mind training, I mean, I don't want... That'll make sense, but... Anyway, I 
I've got a little niggle and we're just getting back into it this week. But here we go, protein cake. Slightly edited. It's got the strawberries and the nans in there. And the point num the technique number two that I use, man, is this probably should have been number one. Structure, routine. That goes down to eating at a similar time every day, training at a similar time every day, going to bed at a similar time every day, getting up at a similar time. I'm getting cobwebbed here, dude. Getting up at a similar time every every day. You know, you're thinking, whoa, oh, I like to just go with the flow, man. But if you look at your routine, your daily life, there'll be some kind of routine in there already. So you've just got to edit it to make it fit what you're doing. And I mean that in a sense of when you go into an energy deficit, calorie deficit, it's going to bring a stress with it, regardless of regardless of what we do, because we're we're going to be there's going to be points where we're going to be hungry, that's going to cause stress. So we need to have a routine, a structure that you can fall back on, and just go in like autopilot mode. I'm eating at this time, I'm training at this time, and it should all flow nicely. But yeah, man. Get that structure set up before you dip into any kind of deficit. Let's try this. I've made it a bit too sloppy actually. But I don't mind it a bit sloppy. But this is too sloppy. I don't know if that's an obvious point, but it needs sorting, it needs doing. Right, the sun has come out, I'm going to eat this and get a little bit of sunburn. This leads me to my point number three, is it? Daily activity, neat. You can't just be going on low calorie diets expecting, expecting the work to do itself if that makes sense. Because we can all eat low calories but if we're not matching that with some kind of expenditure naturally from eating lower calories we're gonna naturally relax more if that makes sense so it's gonna be it's gonna be typical if you're eating less to when you're sat at your desk or whatever you're not gonna be fidgeting moving your hands as much you're genuinely gonna burn less calories so having something like a daily step target is gonna help massively with that so force that activity I do about, at the minute, this training block, I'm doing between like five and seven hours cardio per week. And I still, on days like today, where I'm, where I'm just doing the baseline in terms of just one resistance session and no CV work, I'll have a daily, daily step target, which is 10,000. I've already hit that already, making this video. So that's what we can call it, hacking your knee, just to make sure you're not eating low calories for absolutely no reason just to sit at your desk and not burn off enough to keep you in that deficit. Yeah man, there we are. Last meal. Look at that. It's a lot of food man. The fourth technique I use, volume eating. So you want to be eating low calorie foods but more of them. Things like pumpkin, 100 grams is 23 calories, which is insane. Cucumber, it's pretty much water. I think 100 grams is, God knows, it's like 19 calories. Admittedly, doesn't taste unbelievable. Pumpkin tastes unbelievable, but cucumber and stuff like that, not great. That's where your, that's where your seasonings come in, and you're flying, man. You wanna fill your stomach up. I think I did a video about this a while back. But that's it man. And that'll be about 2400 calories for the day. I've not put it in my fitness pal. But, as I said, focus on this full day of eating, which is to use, give you the techniques that I use when I'm on low calories. 2400 calories is about as low as I go to be honest, so fairly low. Hopefully, 
if you're on 1800 calories, 1500, 2000, you can just implement the same techniques and help you help you get help you just, just help you sustain your diet, man. Because that's what's going to be key. We can all eat low calories for a few days, a week or so, but then it ends in tears on the weekend, man. Not quite 2,400, 2,166. I'm gonna have a couple of slices of this homemade bread. It's homemade, there's no, um, there's no scan on it or anything like that, so it could be anywhere between like 100 calories and 300. Because, I mean, it tastes really nice, so I'm guessing it's high calorie. Mad noises here, dude. What is that? That's all good, drop us a like, bro. I'll see you next time. Yeah, man.